and welcome to Mucking In, the show that celebrates great New Zealanders and creates new gardens for them. It's the community's way of saying thanks to them for everything they do for other people. That's right. They're usually so busy in their own neighbourhoods that they don't have a lot of time for themselves. That's where we come in. We muck in and create something special for them in their own backyard. Now, this week's brought us to Waitakere, the Te Atatū Peninsula, and a woman who lives just over there. She's got a passion for improving the lives of children. Her name is Huri Henare. She's a mother of seven and a grandmother of 13. She's dynamic. She's the principal of this Kura Kopapa Māori Immersion School behind us. And she's not here at the moment, which is why we are. <laughs> but that's not the only thing she does. Huri's committed to saving and changing the lives of young people who need a few good breaks in life. There are always children around Huri. She's been a mother to hundreds. She does work that several people would be flat out doing. The pace of it all has probably got to her a bit lately. She's had bad health and a couple of minor strokes. Yeah. Huri is always admiring other people's gardens, though. Well, now it's time for her. We'll meet Huri shortly, but first, a whole lot of people have nominated her. When I saw the ad, I just, I just thought that a garden would be the perfect way of just um, showing her... Well, it's a symbol of her in the way that she's been able to nurture us. Um, she's sowing the seeds of passion and love and understanding. Um, yeah, and I know that she loves and she admires other people's gardens. And um, I really think that'll be something she'd love. Ever since she began her career, Hori Hanare has regarded teaching as more than a job. For her, it's a mission for a passionate life. When, when I knew her first, she was, uh, she was working full teaching load during the week, and then in her weekends and holidays, giving her whole family's commitment to supporting cultural group practices and, and performances and, and trips and the like. And uh, there was, it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week, her commitment. Hori's also active at her local marae. Without her knowing, we went there to see how some of her young people have turned out. I used to call it the Iron Maiden at school, so... The Iron Maiden? Yeah. <laughs> not understanding, a lot of battle, huh? a lot of love. She really expects you to work for it. It's not a give it away type thing. She's, yeah, she was quite tough. Yeah. For most, yeah. She, you know, like came off of that teacher pedestal and came down and, and was, she didn't even like treat you like a student. I think we found it easy to relate to her because we never saw her as a threat. We always saw her as a mother figure. Um, school wasn't one of the, my most favourite places. I mean, lunchtime was a little bit short for me, so. Um, but, yeah, she really gave me a reason to actually go to school most of the time. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have gone, you know, I wouldn't have gone all the way through. I love it when she's talking to the very little ones because they love it and they look, their eyes, you know, little children's eyes are looking at her and observing the way she's, her actions and how she speaks. And they follow her hands and how she's saying, go this way. And uh, that's how she is all the time. What were the times when she helped you out most? Most of the time it was when there was trouble amongst our family. She was always there. Like one time when my sister died, she was always there for our family, helping us out and all that. How about you, Owen? Can you think of a time when she helped you? Just when I was a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, she's, she's like a second mother. If I could be half the person she is, I'll be doing pretty well in life. We're always telling her, look, Mum, you can't save the world. And she always just replies with, we all have to try. So, that's her. And she's managed to fit in two university degrees as well. Yes, she has. That's fantastic. And that's when we were, um, I was still going to school. And so managing seven children, some grandchildren, and still be able to go to um, work and do a degree. What can you say? Hello is what we're going to say first to this remarkable lady. She's expecting a photographer for a family portrait. Excuse me. Hoodie? Yes? I'm Jim Mora from the TV One show Mucking In. Now, we give people new designer gardens. We design them special gardens, and we do it for people who the community thinks an awful lot of. 
We've had letters nominating you. We've had all sorts of people telling us what a great woman you are. Oh. And we knew your family were gathering, so we've come here to say we're here to do this for you. I, I don't know what to say. I thought we'd gather together as a, to have a family portrait. They all know. Oh, what? They all know. Oh. <laughs> Lena wrote the letter. Okay. But everybody Thank else you. knows too. Natalie and Becky and Isaac and <coughs> Matthew and Morgan and everybody. Oh, surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Thank you. Now, they tell us you haven't had a chance to have much of a garden in recent years. No, I haven't. Um, but I the do. girls tell us it's one of your yes. dreams that you look at other people's gardens mm -hmm. and you admire them. Well, we admire you. And we'd like to do that for you. We'd like to design you a really nice garden outside. Thank you. Would that be all right? Yes. <laughs> yes. The backyard is where we'll concentrate our efforts and we'll tidy up the beds by the entranceway. And the ginger plant and canna lilies days are numbered. Actually, the strip of land between Hoodie's house and the estuary here belongs to Waitakere City. So the council will be pitching in with plants and advice. Our thanks to them. In order to design this garden, I really need to know what sort of plants you like. Oh, without question, native plants. Well, you're right on the reserve here. So, you know, maybe we can extend that reserve back up towards the house and have that whole feeling like you're part of a big, bigger environment. Oh, that would be marvellous. I think that would actually be um, set the real thing that I wanted right from the beginning. Yeah. To be um, close to the water, but have native trees surrounding me. Yeah. It well, brings that peaceful feeling, I think, that I'm looking for. Rocks of all shapes and sizes, courtesy of Yelovich Brothers. Thank you, guys. They'll be a big feature in creating the natural look in Hoodie's garden. Bit of rock and roll with the digger. Now, we've already begun the work to get a good run at it, but you've been very good. You haven't peaked, have you? No, no, That's I fantastic. haven't. fantastic. Thank you. Now, we're sending you away tonight, sending our hoodie and her husband Morgan away tonight to the Heritage Hotel in Auckland. Dinner at the Kermadec Brasserie. Oh, wonderful. Sounds so good. Exciting. I might, I might come with you. <laughs> now, don't you worry about anything. It'll be... Um, something you're not used to it'll be enforced idleness for you thank you you have a great time and we'll see you tomorrow we'll do thank you bye morgan so as the music swells and the crowd looks on admiringly new zealand's botanic battalion marches in bill and ben's they're riding on wine barrels as our tribute to west auckland's wine growing heritage after the break, they'll be getting off the plonk and onto the job. The pace of information technology is changing the world, but New Zealand risks being left behind. And where would that leave you? New Zealand's IT Dilemma, a special series, begins tomorrow, 6 o'clock, on One News. Knocking in on the Te Atatū Peninsula, Waitakere City for Hori Hanare. Early days, tidying up mainly so far. Strikes me as already a pretty nice setting, Richard. Oh, it's beautiful. The house looks out over this mangrove area. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of native trees in behind, so we've got a mm -hmm. borrowed landscape there. Yep. We're going to retain this bank in an ecological way. We're going to bring an expert in to have a look at that, Ooh. what we're going to plant along that bank. Mm -hmm. And we're going to bring those natives back up into the landscape. Hori loves her natives, so that's going to really work in well. Okay. We've got this paved area in here, which mm -hmm. is going to serve as a barbecue area, put a big table in there, mm -hmm. and grapevines along the back, screening off a bit of an ugly back fence yep. in there. So, all in all, once we bring the artists in to really enhance the theme, it's going to work out very well. Some of the first things to go are the wild ginger plants and canna lilies, but a few of them are destined for immortality. What are you doing in amongst the ginger weeds, Beth? There, yeah, I am mm -hmm. cutting some ginger stems for the children to make paper for their nana. Oh, what a great idea. So we can record the event. They're going to put their handprints on the paper, so their nana will have a record of them. Oh. 
rich now. It will make a book. Continuing with the natural garden art theme is this sculpture, a bamboo cave. Where did this idea come from, John? Um, from Japan. I've always been keen on Japanese landscaping, and mm -hmm. they use a lot of bamboo and hard landscaping and pebbles. And, um, I saw a Japanese artist who had made a cave and an installation inside a gallery, and I sort mm -hmm. of dreamed along those lines and decided I wanted to decline a, it into the ground mm -hmm. um, and put a spiral into it. So it turned just, it into a kid's, a yeah, kid's thing. Yeah, that's it's right. So adaptation. The kids can come in here and play and add things of their own. And, mm -hmm. A bit um, of shelter? A bit of shelter. They might mm. bring things home from the beach. It's a driftwood or stones or shells. Mm. And they can make their own patterns on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, They're looking forward to it. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little place to hide. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Another local artist, Potter John Madden, has brought along a selection of his work for us to choose one for the courtyard. Which one do we choose, John? Well, I'd say this one. That's the one with the yeah, height. It hasn't got the best glazes, but I really like the height too, because it'll sit up above the plants. Right. It'll be a real feature then. I think well, we go for this one. Okay. It's rawness. Goes really well with the garden. Yeah. Right. What we're doing here is called dry stone walling. Didn't Sam Hunt once write a poem about dry stone walling? Did he? Sure he did. It goes, I am a dry stone waller. All day long I dry stone walls. Of all appalling callings, dry stone wallings, worst of all. And he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sam didn't actually write that. Our director did. And I'm having second thoughts about it now. I think he'd been visiting those wine barrels. The Waitakere City Council's donated $4,000 worth of native plants. Wow. They'll be used on the margins between Hoodie's Garden and the ecologically sensitive mangrove beds. Now, Chris, this is all about cooperation, isn't it? You encourage people to form partnerships with the council in this kind of work. Absolutely. Um, the, the, the council is very keen to work with the, the private landowners. Um, and, and the, the residents in, in general um, of the city to help restore these areas. They're extremely valuable. They, they add a lot to the health of the city. Um, and there's a lot of them and, and there's a lot of work that needs doing. Will you give people a hand when they set out to improve the area around Mangrove? Yes, definitely. Um, some of the support that, that people, needs, uh, people need is um, financial or material but very very often it's um, it's just knowledge and encouragement the children are helping Beth chop up the wild ginger plants and canna to make paper you can use just about any fibrous plant for this flax is especially good it's such a great idea after boiling the fibers beaten to a pulp then it's mixed with some recycled rag waste and dyed with indigo, which isn't to everyone's taste. <laughs> the resulting goo is sieved, rolled, and then laid out to dry. And finally, it's signed by the artists. Hi. Oh, my goodness. We've got some guest presenters here. Now, what's happening next, guys? Coming after the break. Coming up after the break. Nana comes home. Nana comes home. To see your brand new garden. See you then. <laughs> Mucking in in Teatatu for Hori Henare. With the paving completed, Katrina's adding one of life's little luxuries. Succulent grapes in keeping with the local horticulture. Meanwhile, Trent and Lena are sorting out one of life's little drudgeries. Okay. How high so are you going to make it? We're going to make it at a height that it's going to be comfortable for her to um, be able to reach up without having to reach too high. So, Are you about the same height as your mum? I am about the same height as my mum. Oh, okay, so you, you can be our model. I'm the model, but I'm not actually going to hang out the washing. So <laughs> I'll just show you about the height. Oh, I'm sorry, once we've got your right height, you're the only person who can hang these clothes. <laughs> you're committed. Now, there should be a line that goes in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Voila. Hottie's large and ever-growing whanau calls for a big outdoor table. This comes from Harkness and Young. That's a substantial donation from them. And it's made by Jensen Jarrah. 
And of course the family needs a barbecue that's up to the job. Now there are barbecues and there are barbecues. Look at this one from Renai. I think you'll find it's the full Renai cooking system there, Katrina. As you open it up, it's got the vitreous enamel hood with the die cast and the um, aluminium side panels, the heat probe temperature gauge, but it's got the uh, high performance cast iron burners and the trolleys packed separately. <laughs> It's a wonderful Barbie. Hoodie's on her way home and there's just time for a final flourish. Good thinking, Katrina. And we'll give you a sneak preview of Hoodie's Haven. Very nice. Here we go. Bit of a change. Don't need to say a lot really, except that for once we got it done comfortably inside the time. favorite shot. There you go. Hori Henare. We have been, I'll guide you out, mucking in your friends, there's a step there, your whanau, Bill and Ben's, and this is your new garden. What do you think? Let, <laughs> you like it? I love it. Let I'm me point out a few features. It's a real Waitakere's garden, first of all. It's a rustic, natural garden to go with the bush setting. There are a few little accoutrements in it. There's the big table, which should seat most of the whanau. Oh, thank you. Come and have a look. Now, we've given you a barbecue there, which has so much technology in it, it should be an orbit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a John Madden pot at the end of it. That's a little sanctuary for the Mokopuna, which was designed for you by John Morgan, the local artist. It's beautiful. There are quite a few features. We've done Pahuta Kawas, we've done Kauri, we've done Kofai. Lots of rushes and flaxes, so that the mangrove comes up and meets your garden. And there is a whakapapa book on your table, which was designed for you by Beth Sargent and some of the children. Your whakapapa book is made from the weeds that we cleared away from the mangroves, the ginger and all that really? stuff. Yeah. And that will, um, that's for you. That'll contain the history of your garden. Thank you. I, I just don't know what to say. Words can't express how I'm feeling right now.